want to welcome you all to to the show here and and uh, and uh, the discussion. Uh, Barefoot, the Mark Bummer story is is just breathtaking, if I could use that word. Uh, Julie, how did you happen upon the project? Yeah, so back in 2016, uh, I stumbled on Mark Bomber's videos. You know, he was walking barefoot across America to protest climate change. And every day he would make a video uh, of himself on the road and post it to YouTube. And these videos just kind of blew my mind, you know, like his his sense of humor and penchant for the absurd uh, is, is very reminiscent of Andy Kaufman and just right up my alley with, with that. Um, and I just, you know, was also starting to feel like climate change is the biggest issue of our time and loved that he was addressing it head on. So um, I followed his journey, uh, donated a little bit, uh, you know, posted about him on social media and hope to collaborate one day uh, and unfortunately never got to meet him or talk to him in real life as he was killed on the walk. So then I reached out to Jim and Mary, his parents, to try to make a film to tell his life story. I, I just going to switch to you, Jim and Mary. I, I, I tell me a little bit about, you know, when when Julie called you, what, what went through your mind? Uh, I, you know, I think for us, we had a number of folks who were interested in Mark's story from a film perspective and a documentary perspective. I think what struck us in talking with Julie is we recognized right off, one, there was a passion she brought to her projects. She also had the perspective of, of being a, you know, a social activist herself. I think she understood Mark's social justice orientation. And, you know, it was, and there was a genuineness that came across. It wasn't like this prescriptive thing like, oh, you know, we want to talk to you and we'd like to make a film, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I mean, there were certain people that were kind of off-putting, to be quite honest with you. And I, I get it. Not everybody may have the greatest social skills, but for two grieving parents, for anybody to come and reach out to them and ask about making a documentary, you know, weeks and months out from the death of their only son, mm -hmm. Uh, it is kind of a sensitive time. And, and I think Julie was the one that we felt most comfortable with, especially when she sent us links to a couple of films she had made, uh, you know, Aspie Seeks Love and um, Woman on Fire. You could tell there was a way that she made films that we could see she would take Mark's story and do something I think really special and unique with it. And, and obviously our, 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 I guess our, our sort of thoughts at that time and our intuition has been shown to be right because it is a film that, you know, we sit and watch and say, wow, it's just an amazing film. There's nothing in it that we would like to be different other than the fact that I wish, you know, Mark was still here. So yeah. Mary. Yeah, very quickly, Julie came um, one weekend just to meet and within a half an hour of talking with her, I knew she was the one. She was just such a real person that you just liked. And then when she would ask the questions and very thoughtful, and it was very soon, yeah, I met her. Jim picked her up from the airport. And by the time he drove Julie to our house about a, about 40 minutes away. He's like, yeah, she's the one. And then I talked to her very briefly and we we're very honored that Julie was the one to tell Mark's story. One of the things that, that struck me uh, when I watched Barefoot and, and the film is 87 minutes long, but it, it seems like you know Mark for the, for his life during those eighty seven minutes uh, was his incredible, as you pointed out, his incredible sense of humor and and how he used words. Um, I'll talk with you, Mary. First, was was that a natural thing for him? Did he learn that from you guys? Mark felt very comfortable getting up in front of people at a very young age, and. He was different from even like award ceremony, sports ceremony, when you have to talk about the coach or, or accept awards. 
and other people would be very, very, Nervous. they would just be, oh, thank you, coach. And Mark would be getting everyone laughing. And, and so from a very young age, yes, Mark was, a, was fuller than life. He, mm. yeah. In eighth grade. I get a call from his, no, this was, I think this was his, actually, this was his freshman year of high school at Greeley High School in Carmel and Maine. His history teacher calls and says, Mr. Balmer, I need to talk to you about Mark. And I'm thinking, uh, you know, he's cutting up in class or something. Well, we had our candidates. So we, we had an election today and Mark ran for all of the offices and got up and gave a speech for every one of his offices. And the teacher felt like Mark was mocking the process, which he probably was, and wanted me as his parent to do something. And I said, you know, I'm sorry, Mr. Rickson, but that's your job. You're the teacher. You do whatever you want. We'll accept the consequences, but I'm not going to crush his spirit. I actually, I think it's pretty fun because I think the whole electoral thing is a big joke anyways. So that's what Mark was doing. He was showing the, you know, sort of, you know, he was he was he was illustrating absurdity by being absurd, which is something that the greatest comedians do. So yeah, there was this thing that he had, and then Mary, you want to tell about the gorilla suit in the theater? Yes, Mark bought a gorilla suit, and so he decided, and he had his friend videotape it. That well, first of all, Mark and I were at the gym, and Mark wanted to see the local paper the police blotter and we both finished at the gym at the same time and mark says oh i want to see the forecaster i want to see the police blotter and i go why he goes well i think i'm in it and i go you're in it why well i wore my gorilla suit into the movie theater and brent videotaped me and mark was picking up trash cans and and I don't know if he was dumping them on, but he was just being a gorilla and they quickly left before the police arrived. <laughs> <laughs> and it did make the police flutter. It Yes. Julie, it, in putting together someone's life like this and, 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 and focusing on, of course, the activism for climate change, the walk, there's got to be a lot of stuff that you didn't include. Was there something that you wanted to include that just didn't make the final cut? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, directing and editing this film meant going through Mark's vast body of work. You know, he has a YouTube channel that has 500 videos that span a decade of, of making work. You know, with the Barefoot Walk, he made 100 videos for the 100 days of the walk. Uh, so I think there were just moments of the walk that I wished I could include more of and more of his sort of like philosophical musings um, and, you know, more, more people that we could have interviewed. He had a lot of different folks in his life. We interviewed his, his girlfriend, but there were other important relationships, you know, I wish we could have gotten to. Um, but I'm glad how we kind of kept things focused on like, you know, eight key interviewees that kind of represented different aspects of, of his life from, you know, a writing colleague to a colleague at the Brown University Library, you know, his girlfriend, his parents, um, and the activist, activist group FANG, uh, which stands for Fighting Against Natural Gas, um, you know, and, and they, he was raising money for their group on the walk. So I'm glad we got to feature them as a father too, you know, and, and we look at our kids and, and sometimes we roll our eyes and go, what, what the hell's going on here? You know, and other times we're extremely proud of the people they've become. I imagine the latter is true for you. Your son was an amazing uh, person and, and really <clears throat> stepped forward for what he believed. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I think it was a process with Mark. I mean, there, I think there was a, a time in his life where he was quite apolitical. You know, he was an outstanding athlete. You know, he was a college baseball player. He was first team all New England. His team went to the College World Series and came within one game of a national championship in his senior year. Uh, you know, there. I think he, if he wanted to, he could have probably played some independent professional baseball. I'm not sure if he was quite good enough to catch on with an affiliated team, but he was a really good hitter. 
He was a tremendous, you know, worker. He worked really hard at everything he did, including his writing. I think he brought that same real determination that he, as an athlete, to sort mm -hmm. of work himself to a point where, you know, because his college coach after his freshman year told him, you know, Mark, you're a great kid, you're a hard worker. I'm not sure you can play here. Mm -hmm. And most kids would have said, okay, fine, coach, I quit. Now Mark just hit the gym harder, hit off the tee till he had blisters on his hands and found a way into the lineup as just the first right-handed pinch hitter off the bench. You know, in, in Florida, that sophomore year, he had seven consecutive pinch hit appearances where he got hits. He was seven for seven. So the coach had no choice but to put him in, you know, and then, um, but his writing was the same thing. You know, he moved to Boston after college was living in, we used to call it his Hobbit hole. And literally, you know, was writing three, four hours a day, working these crappy little jobs, you know, probably nine or ten dollar an hour jobs, paying his bills, selling Yankee sucks T-shirts outside of Fenway Park, doing whatever he could. But mainly focused on trying to be a writer and, and putting the time in to be a writer. Mary, your son was an amazing human being. And, and I am so sorry that his life was uh, was cut so short and because I think of a future that, you know, we need more marks in it. We need people like this. So uh, my heart goes out to you, Mary. Thank and you. And to Jim. Julie, I, I'm going to give you the final word as people watch this documentary. Um, what do you think they're going to pull from it? Yeah, you know, we're not telling people to walk barefoot across America and imitate Mark. We're just hoping that audiences can draw some inspiration from, you know, Mark's passion for protecting the earth. You know, he walked over 700 miles barefoot uh, on this journey. And if people can just, you know, consider putting solar panels on their roof or drive a little bit less or eat a little bit more of a plant-based diet and cut down on your meat. Um, you know, there's so many different things we can do, get involved in local grassroots organizations, um, work towards policy changes, uh, because, you know, we're seeing that erosion of uh, environmental regulations now. We're seeing some really scary things uh, as far as rolling back what, you know, Obama had put in place. And mm -hmm. um, we don't have much time to kind of turn things around. Um, so I think it's really important that we take the urgency of Mark's story and apply it to our lives uh, and take climate change personally. I think all of that is very, very important. Again, the film is is Barefoot, the Mark Bomer story, and, and it's available streaming just about everywhere, right? So you can pre-order it now, and it'll be available to watch on October 27th. Good. Uh, we'd love for people to, you know, check out barefootdocumentary.com, where they can go and see our Facebook and Twitter pages and, and reach out to us as well. Also, I did want to add, um, we started a nonprofit mm -hmm. in Mark's memory. It's Mark Bomber Sustainability Fund.org. We're doing good things in Mark's name. So check out, check out our website. You right. guys are so amazing to, uh, to, to talk with me today. And I really do appreciate your time. Thank you all so much. Thank you Thank so you. much, Tony. We appreciate Thank it. All right. You take care. You. This celebrity interview is sponsored by. I'm Annette Severella with Pia Anderson Moss Hoyt. Utah's leading entertainment law firm, serving clients nationwide. We provide solid, attentive representation, focusing on minimizing risk, reducing cost, and protecting the reputation and privacy of our clients. Our goal is to provide you with the legal representation you need to make the right decisions and to protect you and your creative works. Call or email me for a free consultation.